don't purchase countertops or furniture until you watch this video. We're gonna teach you to design your own custom furniture from scratch on a budget. My kids are gonna homeschool this year and we needed new desks, so why not make them look like natural stone? We're gonna teach you every step of the way. This is a blast, it's a great school project, and more importantly, your desks are gonna go with any space. It's never been more fun to check anything off the honeydew list. We're gonna teach you how to epoxy like a pro. We're gonna teach you all the steps that you need to know to get a perfect platinum job. Creating one-of-a-kind desktops couldn't be simpler. Stone Coat Epoxy is designed for the do-it-yourselfer. There's no noxious smell. It's heat resistant, scratch resistant. It's zero VOC. These products are second to none. And the process is explained right here and right now. You need desks for homeschool? Well, consider class in session because we're going to teach you right now exactly how to get your classroom looking amazing. No more desperate shopping for desktops. This is the designer desk. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, guys, I noticed a lot of you have not subscribed yet. You're watching the videos. If you haven't subscribed, I'm about to backflips for your subscribe. If I pull this off, I think you owe me. You agree? Let's go ring that bell to get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. All right, time to dive into this project. First thing we need is substrate, something to build our countertop out of. So I'm gonna lay down some foam and I have MDF, that's medium density fiberboard, and that's what we're gonna cut to size. I got a filing cabinet because this is where my kids are gonna store their books. So I'm gonna measure this filing cabinet to get a depth on what size I'm gonna build our desktop. I like to extend the edge by one and a half inches, so it's a total of 19 and a half inches deep. I'm gonna use my T-square and a simple skill saw to cut this to size. Now I'm gonna do a rock face edge. This is gonna allow me forgiveness so I don't have to cut perfectly straight lines. I could freehand cut it and it makes it more simple, yet I really like the rock face edge. I'll show you how to do that coming right up. Now because this desktop is gonna span itself, it's not gonna have any support underneath other than that filing cabinet, I'm just gonna stack two pieces fully on top of themselves so I get more rigidity. I'm using Type Bond 2 wood glue and some 23 gauge pin nails. These are great pin nails for the purpose and now I'm gonna use a 50 grit metal sanding disc to carve in that organic live edge, that rock edge. The more that you make it rough and tumble, Typically, the better it comes out. That's a pro tip. All three sides that are gonna be exposed, I'll first grind with that metal sanding disc. Then I'm gonna use our all-purpose putty to go ahead and use a gloved hand and make a rougher edge. Give it some depth and dimension. And I'm gonna use that Bondo and some cream hardener. I'm simply gonna mix using our Bondo spatula and then I'm ready to spread it out. I like to go with the grain. This is gonna make it look like slate. We'll apply it rough at first and then come back and sand any of the high and low points. So this is how it looks applied. Next step, take your random orbital sander and sand out any rough points on those edges so it's smooth to the touch. Look at that edge. I love how that rock face edge comes out and it seals that MDF prepping it for the paint. I'm gonna paint this substrate with spray paint to give me some undertones and a beautiful looking color so I don't see through to that MDF color or the Bondo color. I'm simply pre-fogging with black and white spray paint. Fogging some color on the edges gives it depth and dimension so that if you see through any of the coating, you'll look down to some interesting looks. I'm using acetone to wipe away some of that paint to expose a little bit of the Bondo look. I'll also sand so I create a good mechanical bond, which is also dual purpose to give me a more natural look. Sand away any of the nibs and nubs on the surface and you're ready for the next step. I needed to get this desk done fast, so I chose my Stone Coat Platinum product. It dries extremely fast, 
with a short working time so I can get this project done at warp speed. I'm using white and black spray paint, some fire orange, some blue tones, and some bronze. I'm gonna use our two to one ratio on the platinum product starting with part A at a two to one ratio, part B. I'm gonna mix thoroughly with the drill for about two minutes. When you mix, be sure to hold that bucket, mix at full speed, and then slow it down and rub the bottom and the sides of the bucket. Don't forget, mixing time is two minutes. All right, now that I've mixed my clear coating, I'm gonna add a little bit of a wash coat color. This is gonna be our brown dye. I'm gonna do this with a popsicle stick, and I'm just gonna spread it over the surface to give myself a wash coat so that my colors will slip and slide and I won't have any dry areas as I do my exotic pour. I'm putting out cups for every color that I have, and then I'll add our clear platinum product, and then finally, any of the additives. In this case, I'm using a lot of different spray paints directly into the clear platinum. I'll also use some of our metallic powder as well as some dye. I love the pearl metallic powder in conjunction with white spray paint. Now it's time to pour everything back into that mixing bucket and I'm gonna do an exotic pour. This is almost like cheating in class. This is gonna give me a beautiful base that looks natural. What you get with spray paints and metallics they oppose one another and they create different formations in your coating that look like natural stone and looks like it was created by mother nature herself i'm going to pour that mixture across the surface i'll get it all out of the bucket be sure not to waste a drop then i'm just going to move it by hand enough to coat the entire surface i'll tilt the project back and forth until i like the look now remember this is just my base I've saved some of my white so that I can create visual interest and do a real white vein down the center of this desk. This is starting with some of that white spray paint and also some of our white dye. I'm giving myself striated veins and then I'm also gonna mix in some of the white metallic. You can see the white metallic and the white dye, but they complement each other perfectly. Now I'm just using some extra color out of the cups and I'm dragging it through that vein so that I get very natural looks. I don't just want one color, I like to mix colors. So I go back to those cups and I just find anything that I have left over and I noticed I had a substantial amount of blue. Why not do a ring pour where I do little circles with that cup as I pour it out and I create this amazing inset of an onyx geode that looked really, really cool when I was done. I was a little nervous about trying something like this, but heck, I was pleasing my kids. I was making them a desk. Why not have fun with it? I'm scraping any of the drips off the bottom of the piece as well as anything that dripped off onto my table. And I'm just dragging different veins, different visual interest. I'm acting like I'm just creating a very natural stone. It has all kinds of different looks in it of the same flavor and fashion. Don't worry, scrape those drips off, spread them across the top, and you'll be glad you did. It makes you look like a faux artist created something that took hours upon hours. But in reality, I got this, it was easy. Check out the looks that I got and let me know, how do you like this blue? Do you think it came out cool? You guys, check out this piece. I'm making a desk with a live edge. I got a question for you. I did this with spray paint and this is a pretty cool teal spot. I wanna know, do you think it looks out of place or do you like the, the natural stone random teal coolness? Let me know in the comments below, would you have done this teal onyx crystallized whatever it is? Check out, check out the vein in this thing, man. I really, I really like these colors. I did this uh, all with spray paint and a little bit of dye. This is gonna be a school desk. How cool would it have been to have a desk like this when you went to school? All right, time to wipe that color coat with xylene because it's already all dry and ready for the next step after a few hours. So I'm gonna use xylene to wipe away any of that surface spray paint to open this up and get the platinum ready for the clear coat. I'm gonna sand with a heavy 80 grit. The reason I do that is I want a strong mechanical bond. I want good adhesion between each layer. 
After wiping with xylene, I'm gonna sand with 80 grit on the edges, and then I'm gonna work my way to the top and use my random orbital sander to be sure I sand everything. And then once again, I'm gonna use that xylene to wipe away any of that sanding dust and prep this thing for a positive clear coat. Now the clear coat is the same as the color coat, but it's easier. I'm not gonna add any additives this time, just clear. I'm gonna use our stone coat platinum at a two to one ratio. I'm gonna mix in a bucket for two minutes using a drill, just like I did the clear coat. I've measured my desk. I know exactly how much I need, which is three ounces per square foot. So I'm gonna put this in my mixing container. I'll use my paddle mixer and notice I have my one eighth by one eighth square notch trowel ready to go. I got my chop brush. I'm gonna pull any loose bristles out of that chop brush and then I'm ready to pour my clear. I'm gonna pour that all into the center of my project and then use my 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel to spread it towards those edges. Be sure not to push anything over the edge until you've gotten the entire field covered. Now it's time to chop it out. We're gonna chop the surface so that we hide any of the trowel lines and it also mixes the material and we use that chop brush to also brush out those edges in long horizontal strokes. Now it's time to torch any of the excess air out so we get our coating to lay out like a sheet of glass. I had a little bit of extra material so I wanted to make a sample board. Don't ever waste it. I'm adding some black dye to create a wash coat and I had some fun with this. I wanted to see what I could create with a little bit of leftover material. So I used that black dye and I sprayed some white spray paint on a stick and I started to draw a tree. I wanted to see if I could make like a lightning bolt tree. I wasn't really happy with it. So I went back to an exotic pour. All I did is mix a little bit of black and white together and look at what it creates. It's so much easier than trying to force this coating to do something that you want it to do. Simply let it move, let it meld, let it do what mother nature does and your results are second to none. All right, our clear coat is now leveling out. Our materials self-level. It makes it extremely easy to get a glassed out finish. Now all I have to do is sit back and let it dry. The Stone Coat Platinum is ready for the next step the next day. I'm gonna lay the top upside down on a piece of cardboard so I don't scratch it up. I'm gonna use my 50 grit metal sanding disc to remove the drips to prep this piece to receive our ultimate top coat which gives it a very natural non-shiny sheen level. I'm gonna use 220 grit just to shave off any remaining little bumps and nibs and nubs on those bottom edges. And then I'm gonna address the sides of the edges. I'm gonna sand everything with 220 grit so that I prep for a good mechanical bond between the clear coat and the top coat. This is a pro tip. This is how you get your project to have fantastic adhesion and last through the test and trials that your students will put this desk against. Okay, time to wipe away any of that sanding dust. And to do so, you could use either acetone or xylene. We're gonna prep the bottles of our ultimate top coat by first shaking part A and then getting our rollers ready. We're using the two roller technique. A one quarter inch microfiber roller is very important. I'm gonna mark one of my roller handles with tape because I'm gonna have a wet roller and a dry roller. But first, let's remove any loose hairs from these rollers by rolling it across some painter's masking tape. Now it's a two to one ratio on our ultimate top coat. First part A, then part B, and then we're gonna add just a little bit of water. We're gonna mix the ultimate top coat for two minutes using a popsicle stick. Mix vigorously, be sure to rub the sides and the bottom of the bucket, and then fully submerge your wet roller. You're gonna get this nice and saturated and put a nice wet heavy coat on your project. Now, don't be shy, get it wet, and then you're gonna come back to your dry roller. If you have a large project, break it up into a two foot by four foot section do your wet and then dry roller and then move on to the next section. I'm still on my wet roller, I'm just rolling it out. I'm rolling the edges and then I will also do a pro tip and roll the bottom of my project so that I envelope the MDF and I really encapsulate 
this entire piece. After I've rolled on the ultimate top coat wet, I'm gonna use my next roller, which hasn't been used yet, and I'm gonna dry roll this. I'm just gonna roll over this so that I remove any of the excess ultimate top coat. This makes it look like it was sprayed on. It removes your lap lines. It's how you get that professional look with a roller. Just applied the ultimate top coat to this desktop that I created. And I love the sheen level that it gives me on this rock face edge and the surface. It's, it's a very natural look, easy to apply. I'm gonna be using uh, this right here. I'm gonna be using this file cabinet as part of the base. What do I use for the other half of the base? I wanna know, what would you use? I have an idea, but I wanna know, what would you guys use for the base of a homemade DIY school desk that looks like exotic natural stone with the sickest live edge right there. Check that out. All right, the ultimate top coat is dry. It's time to install some legs that I picked up at the hardware store with these mounting brackets. And I can't wait to show my kids what I've created for them. In fact, this was a surprise. They were begging me to help me. So now that I know how to build the best designer desk that you could think of, I'm gonna include them on more desks because I got more kids and more schooling. I'm just using black spray paint. I'm gonna spray paint these legs and keep it simple. I'm gonna mount these to the underside of that countertop. And I really like this slick look. I really enjoyed how this came out. Now these legs weren't the toughest, but I'm also gonna attach it to that filing cabinet to give it more rigidity. Remember, everything that you've seen on this video, the tools, the sundries, the brushes, the trowels, the coatings, the top coat, the platinum, is all found right there in a kit at stonecoatcountertops.com. Go check it out, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, and share this with everybody you know. Remember, it's Stone Coat Countertops. This is awesome. This is awesome, really good, and I love it. Dad did amazing on every step jewelry. He did amazing. He was amazing. Thank you so much, Dad. This is so cool. You got it. All right guys, I'm up here getting ready to jump into this. I want you to remember, visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. And until next time, remember, you got this. We'll see you on the next video. Woo!